What's going on everyone? It's me Lauren. I hope you're doing all right. Today is a very exciting day for Borderlands fans and I myself as a hardcore supporter of the franchise could not be a happier man. I might not necessarily sound like it because I'm whispering. It's only because it's late here and I don't want to wake people up. But it is big news. If you missed the news, Embracer Group who currently owns Gearbox Software or Gearbox Entertainment is going to be selling Gearbox to Take Two Interactive and they'll be joining 2K Games specifically. And as part of this deal, guess what's going along with them? Borderlands and the entire IP, including some other games and franchises as well. I'll mention those later in the video. And the big thing for today's purposes is that yes, they finally officially confirmed a brand new sequel in the Borderlands franchise. So in today's video, I'll be explaining this deal to you so you know what's going on. I'll also talk about whether this deal is a good thing for Gearbox and also for Borderlands. I'll also explain why this Borderlands sequel is almost certainly Borderlands 4. And finally, we'll be speculating as to when this game can actually release. So if you enjoy this video and you find it helpful, please like, subscribe if you're new with notifications if that's possible. But well, let's get right into the news, starting off with this tweet from Gearbox themselves. This is what they had to say. Quote, we're incredibly proud to announce we're joining the Take Two Interactive slash at 2K family. And they included this image, which has a quote from Randy Pitchford, who of course is the founder of Gearbox. And this is what he had to say. Joining forces with Take-Two Interactive slash 2K will help Gearbox ascend to our next level. Take-Two and 2K have demonstrated repeatedly their commitment to our engine of generating creativity, happiness and profit. We set the bar for interactive entertainment and achieved remarkable results with groundbreaking record setting games when we work together at arm's length as partners. I'm incredibly excited about what we can accomplish now that we're fully aligned as one. And as part of today's announcement, there were two different press releases. We need to go over them. The first one is from Embracer Group and the second is from Take Two. So let's look at that one from Embracer Group first. This is what they had to say about the deal today. Embracer Group has today entered into an agreement to divest Gearbox Entertainment for a consideration of USD 460 million to Take Two Interactive Software or Take Two for short. The consideration at closing will be paid 100% in newly issued Take Two shares. Embracer's intent is to sell these shares to receive cash proceeds soon after closing. Closing is expected in Q1 FY 2425, ending June 2024. The divested assets include Gearbox Software, based in Frisco and in Texas, Gearbox Montreal, Gearbox Studio Quebec, and here are the games, Borderlands and Tiny Tina's Wonderlands franchises, as well as Homeworld, Risk of Rain, Brothers in Arms, and Duke Nukem. The retained assets by Embracer Group, of course, include Gearbox Publishing, specifically San Francisco, to be renamed prior to closing, formerly named Perfect World Entertainment, including the publishing rights to the Remnant franchise, the upcoming Hyperlight Breaker, and other notable unannounced game releases. Also, they're keeping Cryptic Studios, including MMO titles Neverwinter Online and Star Trek Online, Lost Boys Interactive, and Captured Dimensions. So now let's look at the Take Two press release. This is what they had to say about the deal. Take Two Interactive Software Inc., one of the largest interactive entertainment companies in the world, announced that it has entered into a definitive agreement with Embracer Group to acquire the Gearbox Entertainment Company, an award winning creator of industry defining entertainment experiences for $460 million. The acquisition is anticipated to be completed during the first quarter of Take Two's fiscal year 2025 ended June 30, 2024, and is subject to the satisfaction of customary closing conditions, including applicable regulatory approvals. Now, here is the key paragraph when it comes to the next Borderlands game. Take 2 expects the transaction to deepen its successful relationship with Gearbox Entertainment and to provide increased financial benefits through a fully integrated operational structure. Take 2 will acquire Gearbox's extensive portfolio of intellectual property, including full ownership of the critically and commercially acclaimed Borderlands and Tiny Tina's Wonderlands franchises, as well as Homeworld, Risk of Rain, Brothers in Arms, Duke Nukem, and Gearbox's future pipeline. Gearbox currently has six key interactive entertainment projects in various stages of development, including five sequels, two of which are from the Borderlands and Homeworld franchises. That is the key line and at least one exciting new intellectual property. Beyond these plans, Take-Two believes that there are incremental opportunities to invest in new projects and to expand Gearbox's proven franchises. And then here's the bit where they mention that Gearbox is going to be joining 2K specifically. 
Future Gearbox operating structure. Gearbox will operate as a studio within 2K and will be led by founder and CEO Randy Pitchford and his management team. The acquisition adds a robust and proven development team to 2K's incredibly talented developer community, including personnel that have worked together on multiple critically and commercially successful games. Gearbox operates studios in Frisco, Texas, Montreal, Canada, and Quebec City, Canada. Okay, so let's talk about this deal. There is a lot to go over. The first thing that I need to say now is that of course the deal is not done yet. It's not complete. It's still set to be closed out in June, as they mentioned. And as we literally just saw with the Xbox acquisition of Activision Blizzard, it needs to be approved by regulators and that process can take so damn long. Now mind you, I'm not at all suggesting that this deal was going to encounter the same kinds of scrutiny and issues that Xbox or Microsoft did when they tried to acquire Activision Blizzard, right? Because that deal was of a completely different scale. That was Xbox, one of the biggest gaming companies in the world, trying to acquire Activision Blizzard for over $70 billion. And yes, Take-Two is very big in their own right, but they're only acquiring Gearbox for $460 million, not even billion. That is a far cry from over $70 billion. So I don't think there is any real risk to competition in the games industry, which is what regulators would look at when assessing a deal like this. So in my opinion, I think regulators are going to approve this deal with flying colors. But of course, I need to say there is a chance, however small, that regulators might find some sort of issue with this deal. If that happened, either Gearbox has to stay within Embracer or they try and become independent. And we'll be talking about that later in the video as well. So that's the first thing. The second thing, and I know people are going to be commenting it in the comments below, Yes, they didn't refer to the Borderlands sequel as being Borderlands 4 specifically. And many people will say, Lone, you can't call this thing Borderlands 4 because they didn't call it Borderlands 4, right? And trust me, I understand the argument. I'm a nitpicker for details as well. I get it. But in my opinion, when it comes to this, we need to read between the lines a little bit. They included a reference to this sequel as part of the press release for this deal which makes it a big deal. In my opinion, it attaches a certain level of importance to this game. And I just don't believe they would do that for a random spin-off or a smaller, smaller Borderlands title. I really do think that this is absolutely Borderlands 4, or at the very least, it's equivalent if they don't call it Borderlands 4. And you need to look at what Randy Pitchford has been saying over the past few months and years as well. He has been hinting and teasing at this game as absolutely being the next big game in the Borderlands franchise. And we've also seen some leaks that suggest that as well. So in my opinion, this is absolutely Borderlands 4, or at least it's equivalent. And I think what's happening here is that they don't want to announce this thing as Borderlands 4, just in case they want to call it something else, just in case they want to say it's Borderlands 4 with some sort of tagline, or maybe it's a full reboot of the franchise. They might just call it Borderlands, and that's the direction that they're going in. It doesn't make it any less of a title. It's still as big as a Borderlands 4 would be. It's just not necessarily called Borderlands 4. So for me, and in my opinion, for all intents and purposes, this is absolutely Borderlands 4 or its equivalent, and we should treat it as such. You might disagree. Let me know in the comments below. But now let's talk about the deal because some people might be surprised by it, but this has absolutely been rumored and teased at and hinted at for a while. So we've known that Embracer has had a lot of issues. I'll cover that in a second. And they've been looking at, you know, unloading and selling off some of its studios, which has included Gearbox, right? And apparently, I'll include the article in the description below. Apparently, Pitchford has been telling developers internally at Gearbox that they essentially had three options. Either they stay with an Embracer, they go independent, or they're sold to a big publisher or developer, right? So those were the three options. And then they said Kotaku in February that the deal was pretty much closed and that it was going to be completed in March. And we're in March and the deal was completed. So they were absolutely right about that report. So we kind of knew this was going to happen. We just didn't know who it might be sold to or if maybe Gearbox was actually going to go independent. So there were a few options, but I don't think this should be a surprise to everyone. But let's talk about the options there. Again, Randy did say we could stay at Embracer, we could go independent, we could be sold to someone like Take Two. So should they have stayed at Embracer? This is my humble opinion that leaving Embracer 
was absolutely the best call and the right decision for both Gearbox and also Borderlands as a franchise, in addition to all their other games, right? Because Embracer has been having issues as of late, and I know that's underestimating the situation, but they have been having issues. So a bit of background and context here. Embracer went on an acquisition spree of gaming companies and developers since about 2017, and they acquired so many companies. They acquired Black Forest Games, Cock Media, Saber Interactive, 4 Eye Games, Gearbox, of course, and many others. They acquired so many games companies. And then eventually the hope is that they almost had this deal with the Saudi Arabia group for almost $2 billion, and it fell through. So when it fell through, they absolutely panicked and said, we need to completely restructure our company and lay off staff and close studios and sell studios because we've just lost out on this big deal. And of course, they acquired all these other studios and spent all that money pretty much in anticipation for a deal like that. So when they lost that deal, it's causing so many issues within Embracer. And because of that, they have laid off 1,387 staff at least since the issue started happening with that deal being, you know, lost. And they've canceled 29 unannounced projects. So 8% of its workforce has been laid off. They've canceled 29 unannounced games. And also as well, apparently they've closed seven studios within in Embracer. That has included Volition, who made Saints Row, and also Free Radical, who made Time Splitters. So they've laid off staff, they've closed studios, and they've looked at actually selling studios to other companies or letting them go independent. And they also have already indicated they're still on the final stretch of restructuring. There are still more layoffs to go. There's still more sales to go. And potentially there's still more studio closures to happen. And all of this is because they're trying to recoup their loss of that $2 billion deal, as I mentioned. So in my humble opinion, if they didn't do this, if Gearbox didn't push to be sold to a company like Take Two, obviously they would have had to have stayed within Embracer. And there was every risk that they themselves maybe not necessarily be closed. I don't think they would ever close Gearbox. It was one of their gems as part of their portfolio. But there was every chance that Gearbox would have had to have also laid off staff and reduced the scope of Borderlands 4. And I think that is a huge, huge risk. It would have affected them as a company, as a development studio. It would have affected the scale and scope of Borderlands 4. And ultimately, I think it would have meant bad things for everyone across the board. So I think it absolutely was the right call and decision for them to leave Embracer and to go to somewhere else, right? But then after that, there are two, two choices. Could you go independent or do you go to a company like Take Two? There is an argument for Gearbox going back to being independent, right? And again, Randy Pitchford hinted at that. Maybe that's something that they do. And we literally just saw Saber Interactive, who was also acquired by Embracer, go independent. They spent 50, uh, $500 million to take themselves independent again. So Gearbox absolutely could have done something very, very similar. But in my opinion... We've seen a lot of consolidation in the games industry as of late. We've seen Xbox acquire Activision Blizzard and ZeniMax. We've seen other acquisitions as well. So I think it was always going to be the case that Gearbox was going to lean towards being acquired again by a big company. There are reasons why consolidation is happening now because it's pretty risky to be independent nowadays. There is no real ability in their eyes, I'm not agreeing with, agreeing with it, but in their eyes, there's not as real of ability to grow and compete with all these other companies that are being bought up, right? So for that reason, I don't think they would have gone independent, especially because they would have had to have financed that sale, right? Gearbox somehow would have had to pull together, let's say, $460 million to take themselves independent because Embrace is not just going to let them go. They're going to want some sort of money. They bought Gearbox for $1.3 billion or up to that amount. And that was a mix of shares. That was a mix of bonuses and also straight cash. They absolutely needed to recoup that loss as much as they could. So there's no way they're just letting, you know, Gearbox go for free. Gearbox would have had to have paid absolutely and likely a very similar amount to what Take Two just bought them for. So that's why I don't think they would have gone independent. And of course, after spending that kind of money, there's a lot of risk with that because then they have to support themselves and Borderlands 4 would need to be a huge success to support the studio moving forward. So I don't think they would have gone independent, even though there are some good arguments to do that. So what's the next best option? It is being sold to a big company. 
And I think Take Two and 2K is by far the best choice specifically for Gearbox because they are the perfect fit. They have worked together for many years on Borderlands. 2K actually owns the publishing rights for Borderlands. And this has always been the case, even when Gearbox was acquired by Embracer Group, right? They have worked together very closely as they've talked about in their quotes, as Randy Pitchford said, they've worked together closely. And I'm actually very surprised that Take Two never tried to acquire gearbox i'm surprised that it was embraced that, that that did that as opposed to take two because they would have been a much much better fit because they have worked together so closely and in my opinion it was probably down to the cost because as i said embracer acquired gearbox for up to 1.3 billion dollars beforehand so maybe that was too much for take two and now take two is acquiring them at a bargain 460 million compared to 1.3 billion that's a great deal for take two so they're probably the real winners in all of this they've got this great studio They've got this awesome franchise in Borderlands and all those other IP as well. I think by holding out, they've probably made the right call for them. And again, for Gearbox's sake, I believe that Take-Two and 2K is probably the best fit for them because of their collaboration and relationship with 2K in the past when it comes to Borderlands. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But now let's talk about the future. When could this Borderlands sequel, i.e. Borderlands 4, actually be released so we know that the deal is hopefully going to be closed in june until then gearbox devs are going to be hard at work on borderlands 4 i don't think anyone's going to be laid off because the deal needs to close so they can't really do anything like that so they're going to be working on this game and borderlands 3 was released in 2019 tiny tina's wonderlands was released in 2022 in my opinion i think there's a very good chance we see this game announced late this year to kind of like celebrate the fact that they're now part of 2k or at the very least sometime next year and maybe the game actually releases towards the back end of 2025 there is a chance that it could be 2026 if the game is really big and they're taking their time with it but in my opinion the best guess is late 2025 so let me know what you think about this news in the comments below and until next time this has been the lone vault wanderer please take care of yourselves and would you kindly keep fighting the good fight